welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am going to do something a little bit different. I am working on this really big project, but this is going to be a test run. If this doesn't work out, then I will probably just do a show and tell for you guys and show you the finished product project. But what's going to happen is this is an incredibly lengthy process and um, I'm going to try to do really short videos and my husband's going to edit the videos. So all of the editing is thank you to my wonderful husband Wayne Becker and his brilliantness. So as him and I have talked many many times before, my world is this. This is my world. Um, his world is technology. So we are going to mix the two together and see what happens when he edits my videos. So without further ado, what the project is, is I am creating, I am altering a shoebox. So this is going to start out as a regular traditional shoebox. Uh, the size that you pick is completely up to you. I just grabbed a box that happened to be in my house because I just bought my son a new pair of shoes. So we kept the box. Maybe it was my daughter. I don't remember. They're young kids, so they're constantly getting new shoes. Anyway, um, what I've done so far is this, okay? And I'm going to show you exactly how I did this because I still have the bottom left to do. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to take a bowl, and I've got a little tiny bit of water in here. What you're going, what I personally did was I did not measure this. I eyeballed it but you're gonna put about a fourth of water to three fourths of uh, Mod Podge. So it's not gonna be straight Mod Podge because uh, basically this is all I have. So I didn't want to use every single bit that I had on this one project because I need to make two of them. But the second one's going to be slightly different and I will go over that one with you guys as well. So I have a little bit of water in here. I'd probably say about three tablespoons if I had to guess and I'm gonna put a decent amount of Mod Podge in there. And I'm just gonna mix it up and look at the consistency. And if I like the consistency, then we're gonna go from there. So you want it slightly thinner than your original Mod Podge, but you don't want it to be water. So then what you're going to do is you're just going to take the glue and you're gonna start somewhere, doesn't matter where, actually, back up, rewind, you're going to take whatever it is you're using as your medium, so, um, or as your texture. You're going to take that, you're going to crinkle it up, and then you're going to rip it to shreds. So, I already did the biggest large piece because it's very loud, and I did save one small piece to show you guys. You're just going to take, this is just a roll of craft paper that I got at Dollar Tree. You're going to take this, crinkle it up, and then you're going to rip it up into small pieces because you don't want the big large piece like this because when you wet it with the watered down Mod Podge, it will flatten it out. Not a lot, or not completely, but it will flatten it out. So you're just going to take your Mod Podge mixture and you're going to start somewhere and make sure that you have a cover on your surface, your work surface. Don't just start Mod Podging without protection on your work surface. Because the last thing you want is glue that doesn't come up. So you're just gonna keep doing this. Make sure that you have a nice thick coat on the bottom as well as over top of your piece of paper. So notice I put it on the bottom and then I lay my paper down and then I very liberally put lots of glue on top. You're gonna keep doing this until it's covered. No rhyme, no reason to the pattern. Just put the papers down and it will fall exactly where you want it to. If you find that you have laid your paper down and there's not adequate glue underneath it, it's no big deal. Just lift it up, like right here, and like right here. There's not enough glue right there. Just lay some down and then continue on with your process. So this is going to continue on until this is completely done. And once that's, once you have covered this entire area, you really want that to dry. You can heat set it to quicken the process. Personally, I just let it air dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue this process and we'll be back as soon as this is done. 
So I just wanted to make a quick tip real quick. Um, quick tip real quick. Yep, yep. Anyway, so when you are finishing up your project here, don't be afraid to use your fingers if you need to. And this is coming from me. I don't like having glue on my fingers. It's irritating to me. But sometimes your finger is a better tool than any other man-made product, i.e. a paintbrush here. So just use your fingers and push out any air bubbles that you might have that the brush missed. Go around the edges and make sure everything is nice and smooth around the edges here because you don't want it to pop back up in the drying process. So once you've done that, just set it aside. Make sure that the side that you're setting it down on is very dry. If you are just now starting this process, do one side at a time. Don't try to cover the entire thing all at once because then you're gonna end up with a mess. When you're trying to dry, it'll stick to whatever it is. So don't do that. Just do a couple sides at a time, but make sure that the side that you're setting it down on, there's no glue whatsoever so it doesn't stick to your working surface, your mat, whatever. Okay, the next thing you're going to do is just clean up. So you can do a couple different things. You can put this glue back into your Mod Podge container and that's exactly what I'm going to do because a lot of times I thin it out anyway. So it's not gonna hurt anything to have just a tiny little bit left mixed in with the regular Mod Podge. If you do do this, then make sure that you mix everything together before you forget. And you can stick your paintbrush in there and just stir it up. And that's all I'm going to do. Pull it back out and then put your brush and your bowl in the sink with nice hot soap, soapy water. Run it over there and this will come off very, very easily. I like to leave my brush sitting in the water for at least the time that I'm drying this because it'll get the excess glue out of the brush. Once this is dry, we will be back to finish the project. See you guys then. Okay, so our box is now dry. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you tips on how to get this crackled effect here. I've already done most of the box. As you can see, I left the top part completely empty. All this is is the Mod Podge with paper, and that's it. So as I started doing more of the box, I started experimenting a little bit more and a little bit more. So on the inside, I used more water than glue, and I ended up with a lot of splotchy areas where the water almost dyed the paper because it, it changed the color and by the time that it was dry it was still that really dark color. So I really liked that a lot. Um, and I also started experiment with, experimenting with the sizes of the pieces of paper that I was using. So whenever you guys do a project like this definitely play around with uh, the texture of the paper, the consistency of the Mod Podge, uh, thinning it out with water, um, thickening up even more with some glue or some texture. You can add baby powder to add a little bit of texture if you want. You can also, um, I think I've seen videos on where you could do like uh, baking soda or something like I personally haven't done the baking soda. I've only done the baby powder. Um, and I do like the baby powder a lot. Um, so anyway, so to give you an idea on how to get this colored effect, there are several different ways you could do this. You could do this with paint um, by just barely, barely, barely putting any paint on your brush and just kind of rolling over it. You could use stains like this. I have, um, these are Tim Holtz stains and that's literally what they are. They are stains. So you rub them on just like a stain. They're not quite as potent as like if you take an ink pad and run it across your paper, but it does do the same thing. Uh, it's just different colors. So you use various different stains and that's what I used on the bottom here to show you guys that and this right here is from this stain here which is called Vintage Photo. Um, I like this a lot. I've used it a couple times already and I do like it a lot. So this is from the Vintage Photo. What I did was basically take this, rub it across here, rub it on all of my little creases here whether they were folds or whether they were um, from the little pieces of paper being glued together and just kind of running all over the place with it and just kind of going haywire with it. Then I take a baby wipe and I wipe off the excess paint or stain or kind of rub it in, you know, whatever it is you want to do with that. 
And there you go. You have yourself a nice colored piece. Now, what I'm going to do at the top is slightly different because I realize that not everybody has these stains. But most people, if they're into paper crafting, they do have some sort of kind of ink. Um, they don't necessarily have the same name brands that I have, or the same brands, same named brands that I have, or, you know, that, honestly, I only have like two kinds of inks. I have the, I have like three Ranger inks, that's it, and then most of my other inks are inks from the Target Dollar Spot. You can also use sprays if you want, but if you're going to use sprays, my suggestion is to spray it before the glue dries so it'll kind of give like an, a little bit of an extra added texture to your project because your glue is wet your sprays are wet this is wet but it's wet in a different way it's not like drenched wet like a spray is this is kind of like a damp wet I guess that's the difference between using like a a washcloth in the shower or a baby wipe at your table. Both are wet, but in a different way. You know what I mean? So you're just gonna go through and you're gonna do this entire thing. And then once this is done, we will come back. Okay, so the inking is done, and just in case I didn't mention this already, I use the Rangel Rangel the Ranger Archival ink, and this is in the color coffee. Um, and just to give you guys an idea of what it does to the ink pads, uh, not a whole lot. So that's another reason why I really like these, because it doesn't really tear off the ink pads, because you're kind of doing some, you're doing a number on these ink pads, so you don't really want one that's gonna fall apart on you. Um, and that's it. So this is the box itself. We're done with that, so we can put that away, clean up a little bit, and this is the box, and it is completely finished. The only thing left to do is, depending on who this project is for, you might want to decorate the top or um, whatnot. So I'm actually going to move my camera up some, so you guys will be able to see this a little bit better. Okay, so I um, probably just screamed at you guys. So I did move my camera up a little bit. You guys can see this probably a lot better than a minute ago. So this is the box completed and this is the inside of the box. And that's it. So it's really, really simple concept as to how to cover a plain old traditional standard, nothing special box into something quite unique and special. Um, it, the only thing is, is it's a very lengthy process. In all honesty, this box took me two days to complete because of how many times I had to do this side with the paper and Mod Podge. Then I, I had to wait. And then I had to do these, you know, this side and then this side and the inside. And it was just, the inside honestly took the longest to dry because I had to close, I had to dry it closed. So, I was able to still open it because if I were to if I were to dry it open like this, then this right here would be stretched out, and then when it folded, it would like crinkle up even more than it's supposed to, and it would make it difficult to close. So it did take a long time for the inside to dry, but eventually it got done. But all of that said and done, two days after I actually started this process, it is complete with the exception of any kind of embellishments or anything like that. So this is one of my couple boxes that I have going out. And so yeah, I think that it turned out really cool. If you guys have any questions or comments, definitely leave those down below and I'll do my best to get back to them as soon as possible. And I hope you guys like this video. Until next time, bye guys.